Hi, and welcome to the 10 square meter workshop. There's three axes on a CNC machine, and this is the third video in my series on building a CNC machine. So guess what we'll be covering this time? Let's get building. The Y axis is being made out of steel. Box section, such as can be seen here, 50 millimeters by 25. I'm cutting this using this Evolution chop saw, metal capable. This gives quite a clean cut, though it does work hard to achieve it. I have mixed views about it. Here are the four parts required for the base. This is 3mm wall steel, pretty sturdy. And this is the shape into which it will be welded. Though of course I will chamfer all the corners first to take the weld. And here is one joint, so prepared. And here it is, set up ready to weld, on a ceramic tile, to retain flatness. After welding and a bit of fettling, I have the base to the frame. And no, you are never going to see me weld. It's not a pretty sight, and you won't learn anything about welding watching me. This is a layout of how it will be. A welded frame is never square or accurate so it will require adjustment and careful fitting. The angle brackets that hold the rails are held on with three 8mm bolts with brass bushes. Mounted, I ensure they are parallel using my small surface plate. When this doesn't rock, the two are parallel. get parallel in the other plane I'm using gauge blocks to measure the gap. From this I can calculate the offset required in the mounting holes. This involved an offset to the rail mounting of 0.57 millimeters. They now measure as square as I can measure them. Next I have to make the table to mount on these rails. So it's back to the familiar DRO map. First the counter sinks 5mm clearance and then countersinks. I do intend covering this table with an array of threaded holes for hold down but I want to get it fitted first. Bolted to the blocks the action is nice and smooth from one end to the other. With that okay it's time to go back in the mill and spot for that matrix of threaded holes and then the tapping size holes. Threading the holes can come later. For now I want to mount the ball screw. With the ball screw bolted to the table the mounting holes for the front bearing can be marked. The holes in the bearing blocks in this axis are 5.5 millimeters so using 5 millimeter bolts gives a bit of latitude to get a smooth running. To mount the main bearing thrust block, I first cut off two pieces of half inch aluminium. These are machined in the mill until they were 35 by 28.4 mils, the measured dimensions I need to support the block. These fit between the bearing block and the frame. They were then drilled and tapped 5mm to match the holes in the bearing block. The motor mount will also be the clamping plate. Another piece of alley, this time 8mm. All four edges were milled square and flat as usual, with a minor dimension of 60mm. I then move to the centre of the block, zero my DRO, and drill a pilot, followed by spotting for the six bolt holes. The six bolt holes were drilled, 5mm tapping. The two inner ones countersunk and the centre drilled 5mm. It's now time to replace the vise with my rotary table and clamp the workpiece firmly down using a centering bolt. It's mounted on ply so I can cut right through. The features I need to cut are the centre hole for the spindle and a rebate to fit the motor. First step is to cut the rebate. This is 38.2mm diameter and 1.7 deep. And then the clearance hole for the coupling. The four motor mounting holes could then be tapped. I needed a hole through the steel frame big enough to take the coupling. 
For this I used the step drill. Rather than get a Chinese one I got a decent brand and it went through it no trouble. Really recommend these. After a bit of trimming with a file it's now a good clearance fit. With everything lined up I could firmly clamp the motor mount to the frame. Now you know why I left so much space at the sides of the motor mount. The motor can then be removed and the two mounting bolts drilled through and that's why these were tapping size not clearance. They're going to go through and into the block that holds the bearing. With it all bolted together it's time to give it a test. <coughs> Works fine. With the zero switch fitted, quite simple in this case, straight to the frame, that's another axis completed. So that's all three axes built. All I've got to do now is bring it together. And that's the subject of the next video. Don't miss it. Why not subscribe? Bye for now.